Well, hello everybody out there. So I'm going to just do a quick update. Everything going on here with our family. Not that it really matters. There's seven billion some people on the earth and I'm just one little tiny speck. Maybe the information I share. Are you listening to me? No. Oh, okay. But you're kind of a dork. Why am I a dork? Yes, sir. Let me make my video in peace. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. I primarily work from home. Actually, I always work from home. And Robin, we, we joked about this at the beginning of all this onset. People were like, how are you and John getting along? It's like, we've been practicing this for 10 years. Because she's been pretty much, yeah, I work from home. So again, not a whole lot's changed. I do a real good at, at appearing to be a very social person and being an extrovert, I'm not. I think doing the YouTube videos has helped me. As I get older, I tend to care a little less of what people think and I just be myself. With that being said, even in my situation where I work from home, I generally don't like going out too much anyway. We would go do things with Alvin Mike or with our kids and stuff like that, but that's about it. Even for me, I am starting to feel a little confined and that surprises me. I'm not sure why. We've gone out about once a week to go get groceries, and that's about it. Weather's improving, so I did start going outside and I got me a new antenna mask for my ham radio. I figured maybe I'll try to get that working again. I finally got my two meter radio on. It hasn't been on since we went on the trip. As you notice, as we're progressing through our videos of the trip, we are down to almost the last week, a little more than a week left of our 12 week journey. It ended up being about 11 and a half weeks. I'm finding as we are editing the footage for the last week that we spent in Arizona, my intentions with that footage is to cut in some clips of when we lived there before. It is a bittersweet segment of that journey. I moved to Arizona in 2006 after a divorce because my ex moved to Arizona with my daughter. She moved to Williams where her family was at. I moved to Flagstaff so I could be at least close to my daughter. It was a, it was a hard time. Uh, I had a lot of work I had to do on myself. It was a very forged in fire kind of time. Because of that... Was it done? Was it forged in fire? <sighs> Robin's making fun of me. Because of that, it... Arizona has some very important memories for me. It is literally bittersweet. Good and bad and just a, a huge Good major God. turning point in my life. So that's what Arizona holds for me. As you watch these videos from Arizona, I know it may not be some of my best footage. It's obviously not on my GH5 because it was busted by that time. And uh, some of it's even on my GoPro 4, which is archaic by today's technology. It is what it is. I hope you enjoy it. I know not a lot of people watch my videos and that's okay. I just now finally crossed the 4,000 hour mark. So AdSense is finally going to turn back on, I think, here. Yay! I might get a whole dollar a month from them. Almost 2,300 subscribers. My videos must really suck. That's all I can say. I know they suck. Okay, it's, it's all right. I, I, I can acknowledge that. I've been doing this actively since 2014. <laughs> I've got close to 700 videos, and I've only got 2,300 subscribers. Yep. Obviously, I'm not doing it for notoriety. The reason I make the videos is totally a personal reason. Uh, I don't record them at 30 frames a second. I have vision issues and 30 frames a second really bugs my eyes. I can see, it's funny, I'm, I don't have great vision, but I can see the flicker of 30 frames a second. All I see with flame blur, blurring is blur. It makes my blurry vision blur, blurrier and I don't like it. And so that's why I shoot everything at 60 frames a second. It makes a huge difference when you have garbage vision, to me that made a bigger difference to me than a higher resolution. I don't know what the point of this video was, mainly just to talk because Robin gets bored with my conversations about techie things so, or about investment solutions or what the price of gold is or the price of silver or that kind of stuff doesn't interest or ham radio that most definitely does not interest Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to say, I know I'm not funny, but I don't care. You're freaking cracking me up. 
anyway, to everybody out there who's struggling, I can't imagine what it would be like. Well, I can't imagine what it would be like to be single during this time. When I went through my divorce and my ex left with my daughter and I was left in a big house all alone, it sucked. I was pretty much in denial at that point in my life. I'm full disclosure, I'm bipolar. And I wasn't diagnosed as bipolar at the time. That's not an excuse. I knew I had issues, but I just made excuses for them. Needless to say, it was a very lonely, lonely time. So why the reasons for it existing weren't because of a virus. I can kind of imagine what it was like to be depressed, shut up in your home, not going anywhere and just being alone with your thoughts. To everyone struggling with those kind of feelings, you'll get through it. I know you can get through it. If I got through it, anybody could get through it, right? No, it's everybody's different. Everybody handles things differently. This is not something that's in your control. This is out of your control. You, you, you know that once this situation that's currently going on today passes, the sun will rise for another day and life will go on. I just had a talk because I'm going insane in my head right now. Uh, I tried to get some work done today and I literally couldn't hardly focus on anything I needed to get done. I got, I wasn't, it wasn't productive at all. I was able to supervise someone that's underneath me and help them get their projects done and going, but for my work, I was just, couldn't focus. It was hard. Right now, I see my kids are really struggling with this. Tiana is a, a very social person. She's been struggling where she moved to try to get, you know, a friend base there. Then, as things started looking up, this all happened. My other daughter, Britton, my actual flesh and blood daughter, she's not really a social person, but she has a small group of people that she is very close to and she's not able to spend time with them right now either, and it's having an impact on her. I don't know if it's affecting me as much as it is because of seeing how it's affecting them. I think if I knew they were okay, it would be affecting me less. Anyway. This sucks, doesn't it? Well, hang in there. There is a saying that I strongly believe in because it's definitely applied to my life. What doesn't kill you will make you stronger. When I was a kid, you know, when my brother was a kid, he had to worry about things like the Cuban Missile Crisis. That was a big deal. I mean, that, that was a really big deal. I, <laughs> I think it'd probably be, I mean, I'm not speaking from experience because that was before my time, but I think that would have to be scarier than this virus, to be honest. This virus to me isn't technically scary for me. It's scary for everybody directly to me. It's not like an atomic bomb blowing up and annihilating you and everybody else. So from a selfish point, the virus is not really threatening to me, but it is very threatening to, you know, I've called my mom more in the last few weeks than I have in the last year because they're old and I worry about them. Uh, grandpa, he's trying to still recover from the loss of his wife in 2015, Robin's grandpa. It's taken him this long. He just moved here to Newton last year. He's getting back on his feet. And of course, he's now cooped up. And this is not, this is not good for him. And so from that aspect, it's a different kind of fear than if you know, the kind of fear you'd have if you're going to get blown up by a nuclear bomb. For me, it was, I remember the TV show when I was a kid, uh, The Day After Tomorrow, you know, and that was a big fear. Still, I don't think that was anything like as bad as the Cuban Missile Crisis probably was. Things that were before my time, like the Vietnam War, I don't, I can't imagine what it'd be like living during that time. For us of the older generations, this is like the day after tomorrow, that mindset, or the Cuban Missile Crisis, that terrifying fear. I mean, this has got to be a big thing for a lot of them that are actually taking it seriously. And those ones that are taking it seriously are going to have a big impact because they understand how serious it is. I was very, very upset when I saw all those kids on the beach and their attitude for it. I think back to when I was that young. 
don't think I would have done that, but I did some pretty dumb things. Are you not done talking yet? No, I'm not done talking yet. That's why I love you. Because you're sassy. Sassy! Please don't ever do that again. Sassy! I can't. <laughs> well, I, I guess I don't have anything else to say. Everyone just hang in there. I'm not saying I understand how anybody else feels. I'm just trying to give it from my perspective and I know that's just one point of view. I do strongly believe what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> I live with her. <laughs> what? Nothing. Enjoy the rest of my... makes you stronger. A chart gets all stars. Have a good night. Amazon Music.